What the heck is up with the Canon AE-1? Was it the camera that changed everything? Is it important? Was it any good? Is it expensive? All that and more on this episode of Focus Up. Can you imagine trying to photograph an Olympic gold medalist by Jean Claude Kitty? It's quite a challenge. Made me really appreciate my Canon AE-1. The automatic shutter priority system is a must, especially when your subject's doing 50 miles an hour. Try it, it's fun. What? So the AE-1 is so simple to use, about all you do is focus and click. The incomparable Canon AE-1, so advanced, it's simple. Canon, the official 35mm camera of the Winter Olympics. Alrighty, Roo nerds, this is everything I can find on the internet to get you focused up on the Canon AE-1. Alright, buckle up, because we're going back to 1974. Not the year that the Canon AE-1 was introduced, but about two years or 28 months to be specific prior to that. It was a time where computers had yet to meet the strange little rectangles with buttons and mirrors that we know to love today. Yeah, that's right, kids. Cameras used to be dumb. Just out there clunking around and whatnot. Now they're incredibly smart. Kind of scary, to be honest. Anyways, back to dumb cameras for comfort's sake and learning. It's the year 1974 and Canon is like to themselves, hey, how do we make SLRs more accessible to everyone? As in cheap and easier to use. At this point in time, SLRs and most cameras were designated for pros and enthusiasts. It turns out no one really had the answer to this never before asked question, so they hired some people. And we'll call these people the scientists. The scientist's goal is to implement electronics to exposure and make a more affordable and easy to use camera. So the scientists went off and did the scientist thing and about 28 months later, out popped the Canon AE-1. It's now 1976 and the scientists bring the Canon executives the first ever single lens reflex with shutter priority, meaning you could select your shutter speed and the camera would automatically adjust the aperture to get the correct exposure. This was a first of its time, it was revolutionary. Since they implemented the use of a computer chip, they were able to significantly reduce the amount of mechanical clutter. They were also the first camera to incorporate the use of plastics in the manufacturing. This was highly controversial at the time, as people weren't sure about how the camera would feel. However, the scientists had already devised a plan. The plan? To apply a thin layer of iron oxide to the plastic before the final coat of paint, thus giving the camera a full body metal feel. These features, along with the newly designed camera, made it incredibly easy for the average person to use, and thus Canon created a legend. For the next several years, the camera continued to grow in popularity, mostly amongst amateurs. It helped give Canon credibility and turn their company around, allowing them to invest and bring out the Canon AE-1 program. Canon's AE-1 program is impressing a lot of people. For the pro photographer, it's even more advanced. And for pro quarterback Joe Theismann, it's even simpler to use. No matter how tough the shot, the program mode automatically sets the camera for the best possible photo. This Canon is super. The Canon AE-1 program. So advanced, it's simple. This was now 1981. There wasn't much of a difference other than ergonomics and the program auto exposure mode, as well as I think an updated shutter speed dial. But like all good things, the Canon AE-1 and AE-1 program ended production in 1983 with Canon introducing their new series of cameras, the T-Series. Considering it was the first camera to use a computer chip, a chip designed by Texas Instruments nonetheless, first camera with auto exposure modes, first camera to implement plastics, all those features led to a more modular camera, a camera that was easier to adapt to assembly lines, further reducing the cost to produce the camera, essentially changing camera design forever, as well as forcing their competition to adapt. Uh, yeah. I think this camera is pretty friggin' important. Okay, I've never personally used one, but considering they sold around 1.2 million units in the first 20 months, millions and millions and millions after, I believe they still remain the highest selling SLR camera today. Yeah, I think they're pretty darn good. However, being a first of its kind didn't come with its problems. Mostly today's problems, however, but still, problems. Like a lot of old film cameras, the seals tend to dry out, which is really no big deal. It's usually a pretty easy fix if you know what you're doing. If you don't, you're gonna have to find someone to work on the cameras, which may be a bit tricky, but yeah, Google it. As it was the first camera to feature electronics, you can imagine those electronics were pretty shoddy, obviously. That makes sense. Right, but they also ate batteries and are a brick without power, meaning completely useless. And apparently the battery door on the front tends to break a lot. We also find that user reviews are pretty split. Some people love it, while others find it a soulless, useless, plastic brick with horrible ergonomics. And honestly, it seems like the advertisements of the day were far more geared towards the camera being easy to use than the camera being good. So uh, yeah, play at your own risk. Canon says the original listing for these was 81,000 yen, or about 530-ish USD. Today, you'll find prices kind of range all over the place depending on quality, 
depending on where you're getting it, yada yada yada. Yeah. In the end, the Canon AE-1 holds a pretty dang special place in camera history, as well as was a turning point for Canon as a company, as it allowed them to start making money and reinvest in themselves, and yeah, it was the start of their dominance for years and years and years and years to come. I hope you guys enjoy watching this series as much as I enjoy making this series. I really enjoy doing the research and learning more about cameras, it's just, just something I love. Um, yeah, I'm not going to stop them anytime soon, so yeah, I, uh, I like them. I hope you like them. Anyways, thanks for your time. Thanks. Love you. Bye. Oh. Hey, uh, you want to help me go full time? Like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal. Thanks. Love you. Uh, bye.